Hello and welcome to our webinar today where we're looking at loan sales and particularly the involvement of vulture funds for foreign property loans. Um, we're doing this webinar to spread our uh, knowledge and information experiences with uh, hedge funds over the years. Um, essentially, loan sales occur when there are surges in an economy. Uh, and it's a case of banks being able to cleanse their books, if you like, uh, get rid of uh, things that basically don't suit them. They may include uh, delinquent um, clients, delinquent being they didn't pay their way, um, uh, asset valuation problems, and or sometimes just they don't fancy it and they want it off their books, they've moved on to new things. And it's not a new phenomenon, but it's quite a new phenomenon in terms of holiday home mortgages. Uh, literally yesterday in the UK funding circle, which most people have seen on TV, uh, they gathered up a load of uh, non-performing loans, aka delinquent, and they sold those off to uh, a loan purchaser in this instance. Wouldn't quite call them a vulture fund, but that's Cabot. So it's something we're becoming more, uh, more prevalent, I say, particularly in Spain and Cyprus. And there are two completely different markets. Uh, and banks use this to tidy up their books, as I say, and it gets, it's okay, they can do it. We'll come back to that a little bit a bit later on, because very often people think, hang on a minute, my bank, my mortgage is with them, it stays with them. There would have been rights to assign, but we'll go through that in a little while. But we're sharing our experience. I've dealt with vulture funds in one way or another for over 15 years here in Belfast. This is our lovely backdrop we have here. And we want to share our experiences and knowledge, as I say, so that you get a bit of a context here. It can be quite uh, worrying when you get uh, a letter out the blue that the bank is selling their loan and or it's sold and here's the new owner and they're writing you. So again, context, understand what's in front of us. Not always easy, but these things can be dealt with. So next, I'm going to look at uh, what a vulture fund is. Now, vulture funds are typically funded by the likes of hedge funds, huge organisations, lots of money available that come along and buy a loan book from a bank that basically the bank doesn't want. Usually multinational companies, which isn't in the favour of our typical EU clients, because one of the main things that we do is make sure a problem stays in that country. Uh, vulture funds typically have... Uh, multi-jurisdictional skills and can take loans wherever they want. A couple of things here I want to share with you which, which will demonstrate uh, the difference between your traditional lender and or a loan sale uh, stroke vulture fund. Very often if a client doesn't uh, engage in terms of the process they can get very aggressive and they're uh, not afraid across jurisdictional, whereas typically a Spanish bank wouldn't know what to do uh, even in Northern Ireland here they don't know what to do in the south and vice versa. They can modify the terms of your loan agreement. Again, typically uh, our EU clients have old style mortgages which are subject to abuse in every sense uh, and change. Uh, they're also a lot more commercially minded. And I think it's important to understand what uh, vulture funds actually do. Essentially, they buy debt for a discount and they're trying to get a return on that discounted amount and they want the money quite quickly. That, 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 that is always apparent. They're, they're, they're short-term lenders. If you've got 15 years to, to, on your mortgage still to go, they're not going to be here in 15 years' time. They'll repackage it, deal with it, fall out with you, whatever they're doing, but they're short-term, basically trying to flip that initial investment into a decent return. So if they buy a loan for 25%, if they can... If they can get 50% of that loan value back, they get a 100% return on their investment. So that's how they work. But they can be quite brutal, very hard to negotiate and settle with, settle with, settle with, sorry. But they are commercial and that's something that we always work on. And repeating myself, they're far better at any cross-jurisdictional issues. So if you think you can hide in the UK or Ireland away from such an issue, you can't. Next, I'd like to look at why banks sell their loans, okay? And with particular reference here uh, to Spain and Cyprus, we deal with all, uh, any number of countries, but they're our primary markets. Um, and it's, it's sometimes very galling for a borrower. You may be the, the sort of people that quite rightly through their lives have made sure they've met all their bills. 
you may have made a bad decision with a European property, but suddenly uh, you've got a new uh, company here chasing you for money, and you may have been kept you may have kept up to date completely in all your bills, etc. But unfortunately, if you're in a portfolio that sees the bank say, we just want rid of that, that may include bad uh, delinquent borrowers uh, versus yourselves who may be very good, but it doesn't matter. It, they go as a block. Uh, they, they don't sit there and uh, review every single loan. They'll do their due diligence on a, on a portfolio of loans, but that's about how, uh, as far as they go, and then they take a view. Uh, banks, you don't like hard work. There are a lot of issues, particularly say in uh, Cyprus with title deeds, and very often in Spain, they're not brilliant, famous last words, in terms of recovery of monies that are due to them. And they don't like uh, hard work and or long drawn out processes. Um, and yet again, I'll say it, they're very poor at cross jurisdictional issues. We had a client there who has a Santander mortgage in Spain and um, the bank wrote from Madrid in Spanish to our client. And that's how good they are. Obviously, they're going to get little or no response. A, our clients don't uh, speak Spanish. And B, it's, it was literally a waste of paper. Loan sales and vulture funds bring a different animal to the party. And banks use this to tidy up their balance sheets. And there are a lot of other um, requirements now in terms of what banks carry in terms of their spread of portfolio. And they're, they're required under various provisions since the last financial crash back in 2009 to conduct the balance sheet and themselves differently. They have to acknowledge debts quicker. They have to provide more capital in their balance sheet should the loan go wrong. And with that backdrop, they think the best thing is to take a loss quite early so that then they can just move on and reinvest somewhere else. Um, the, the, the COVID scenario as well brought this a lot a lot more into into the picture. We were dealing with our legal team the other day and we were talking about the fact that some of the major Spanish banks are just saying, right, it could have got better, but COVID has obviously seen the market off there. It's very difficult. We're going through a process now where we prepare um, proposals for clients where we're looking at the real value, the COVID effect, the COVID Brexit effect, we call it. And banks just don't want to deal with this. It's, it's more trouble than it's worth. I'm going to mention a little bit further on about Brexit, but it's a, it's a two-way street, okay? Uh, it's something you may think you can hide behind, but you can't. But also, flip side is, particularly Spanish banks, they're worried about it themselves. So ne next, I'm going to look at a couple of uh, popular misconceptions. One is, they can't chase me in the UK. Oh, yes, they can, um, despite uh, Brexit. So get that one out of your head completely. Uh, if they secure any sort of judgment form in the country, be it Cyprus, Spain, any EU country, and most OECD companies, uh, countries that uh, basically all agree how we should basically conduct ourselves in financial terms. So you will, you can and will be chased in the UK. And we have any number of clients who, uh, or potential clients come to us and say, right, I'm slightly concerned about this. I uh, haven't heard from the years, but I'm okay because I spoke to Bill down the pub and he said it's all okay. Someday that will rear its ugly head because it will take the form of a loan sale. It might be very, very delinquent debt and it's... Uh, and over years, we've seen some of these amounts that are claimed absolutely mushrooming. So it's very important to understand one way or another that you will ultimately be chased in the UK. The other one is they can't do this, okay? And basically they're saying, well, hang on a minute, I've got a mortgage contract here that says this uh, and uh, I'm with who, whatever, whatever bank, whatever CAHA, whatever Cypriot bank, I've been there, I've done my thing, they can't do this. With respect, I would suggest your mortgage deed will be in the foreign tongue, either Spanish, Cypriot, Polish, uh, Norwegian, we were dealing with a case the other week, and uh, you will not have read the complete detail. In there, I guarantee there will be a clause that allows them at any point if they wish to, to assign that debt, that loan, that mortgage. And you would agree to it, because back in the day, it wasn't an issue. Now it is, and the assignment clause gives the ability to then sell the loan. Um, and it's in the small print. You wouldn't have understood the language. Would you have read it anyway? Uh, and the assignment clause allows the sale. 
I mentioned Brexit earlier. Brexit works two ways. Some people think we can hide from it and we're out of all that carry on. Not a political statement. Flip side of it is the banks are worried and know they've got to do something because it's not going to make it easier. Brexit compounded by COVID has made their position even more uh, entrenched. When I mentioned COVID, the statement is actually more about the ability to travel and or the desire to commit to property going forward. And banks are sort of suggesting picking that trend up and saying, enough for us, let's just get rid of, uh, excuse my French, crap in their eyes, get rid of it, give it to a fund that can work it hard. And that's what vulture funds do. So popular misconceptions. But what you've got to look at is saying, right, okay, always be realistic. We deal in debt in many forms. We have over 350 clients. We know debt, the psychology of debt, and et cetera. And very often people try to hide behind these popular misconceptions. Or Fred at the pub told me this, or another person reckons this. Be realistic with your situation and take a reasoned view with what must be expert advice. So don't panic, react, do something about it. Uh, Know the options. And little advert, that's where we come in, because we, we know debt, we particularly know uh, holiday home debt, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's, that's what's going on there in terms of the popular misconceptions. There are a lot more, but we'll keep it at that. So go, if we next return to the scenario where you've got a, a holiday home mortgage and everything's going well, a bit of negative equity, maybe a few issues. If you're in Cyprus, you may have the issue with title deeds, which isn't great. We've got to then, I want to use this section to look at how how hedge funds work if you've got a a conventional mortgage. So they're looking for a short term out. They may give very good offers to you to get out, okay? So if you originally had a 150,000 pound mortgage, they may, for instance, say, well, we'll take 75 for it. And again, going back to what they're about, and that is to get a short-term return on their investment. So it's it's really important to understand that. They'll still take your monthly payments uh, because they've got to service what they've got as well, but ultimately they want you out. And if you, you do have the situation where you haven't been able to keep up the arrears, uh, the, the mortgage payment got into arrears, then, con- then subsequently they will be a bit more aggressive because they, they, they'll try and take the more high ground. Well, you've not performed, so we just want our money back and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So that's where they work. So if you're in a fund, if you're in a situation where you've been able to pay along the way, very good, and you should be okay through that. If you haven't, then they could be coming at you. Now, in terms of our experiences across the board, be it corporate finance, uh, any type of commercial finance, uh, farming finance, whatever, when it gets to a hedge fund, they still want out relatively quickly, but they want their pound of flesh. And what they will do, they will pursue quite vigorously any legal route if they don't think they're getting anywhere. Uh, And they will then flip that case, say, to the UK or Ireland, And that's when costs get way out of control. And we see any number of cases where people think they borrowed a couple of hundred, uh, a thousand euro, um, didn't pay anything for three or four years. And now there was a legal case in, say, Cyprus. That's transferred to the UK. And legal bills are run up here. And literally, the case has mushroomed up to, say, 400,000. And that happens more regularly than we'd like to see, especially with the larger size mortgages. Keep an eye on rising costs. If, you, if, you're, if you're in a difficult position, do something. Don't let's let it ride out because that's just manna from heaven for, for solicitors, especially, as I say, in Ireland and the UK. So it's very important to grip that. Plus, with all these costs coming in, because it's an old-style mortgage deed, it will have the right, usually, to compound the interest. And compounding interest is great when you have an investment, but it's the enemy if you're, you're in debt. Whatever you do... Don't bury your head in the sand with this. You know, take these things on, because uh, otherwise it just get worse over time. So, if you don't engage, this is another side where thinking, how does this work here? So, if you again two ish two two stances, if you're in good form and you've been paying it, speak to them, tell me what, ask them what the options are, right, uh, and just gauge what they're saying. Don't hang on their every word because. As I often say, not everyone believes it, but sometimes financial institutions don't always tell the truth. If you ignore them, you're going to create a monster. Uh, Because as you go down the track, they'll become less receptive to 
uh, offers, reasonable offers, unreasonable offers, whatever. They just be, they just think, no, you're, you're, you're a messer, you're not engaging here, we don't care, we're going to do what we're going to do. And that becomes dangerous if you are asset rich in the UK uh, and Ireland, because it's quite easy in today's world with the availability of data and information to quickly assess what people are worth and not worth. So if you owe, uh, say you have a shortfall or, or a bill here in terms of the, the situation of say 200,000 euro, but your home is worth 500,000 euro and you have a 100,000 euro mortgage on it, the, the uh, Vulture Fund and other advisors will go all in. And so it's very important to control this thing and get that level of engagement. Again, we're telling you this from our experience with hedge funds and how it gets there. Very often they, they'll talk to us in an open off the record base and say, right, they've done nothing, they're messers, we're, we're gonna do what we have gotta do to get this money back. And it's our job then to engage with them and control them. And if they start litigation, very hard, it's very hard sometimes to stop because you've got the outside influence of solicitors who are there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to earn fees. And if they get carriage of the case, it gets very messy and very expensive. And again, I'll repeat the thing, if you've got assets there in the UK or Ireland, you need to protect those, and you do that by full engagement and full transparency, then you'll get solutions through this. And finally in this bit here, the effect on your, on your holiday home mortgage could be, they're not, about, they're not worried about crossing borders and coming to find you. Just that example I gave earlier, in terms of the letter from Madrid in Spanish, <coughs> that wasn't worth the paper it was written on, and, but uh, hedge funds, vulture funds, and loan sales see far more aggressive pursuit. So next, I'm gonna talk about the possibility of being chased in the UK or Ireland, despite your mortgage being in foreign climes. As a basic premise, it's always better to try and keep the problem in the country where the loan was granted, because you want to keep it in their legal system. Now, many people talk about the legal system in the UK and Ireland being, an, you know, the system's an ass. Wait until you get to the likes of Spain, where, for instance, in Estepona Court, we have a case there, we're working with our legal team there. It's, been, it's not even listed four years on. So we haven't even got to discuss it with the court. Obviously we've had COVID, but there was that sort of delay anyway. If you don't keep in control of the case and get the right legal team, if there is the action in that country and looking to keep it there and they get to the UK, you're in trouble. Now, again, many sort of barroom lawyers will say, don't worry about it. Since Brexit, we're out of that. They can't do that anymore. Wrong. Typically, any debt, as I referred to earlier, which is incurred in a country that's a member of the OECD, is a very basic measure. It can be pursued in other countries because they have a cross-lateral agreement. When we were in the EU, it was a lot easier for them to do it, but it can still be done. So don't, if somebody said, well, they can't chase me in the UK, uh, they can, but what you're trying to do is leave it where the problem is. Sometimes you get issues where letters are sent to your foreign address. So if you've got your holiday home in a golf resort, say in the Murthia area, you may be receiving your post there, even though you've not been there for two years, and there'll be maybe all sorts of consequences on the doormat. Uh, and some lenders are a bit, well, we'll call it naughty is the polite phrase, knowing that then they can start issuing court proceedings there and stuff like that to that address, and you're not there. So it's very important to understand the, the basics and the premise of their desire to get a judgment to then transfer it to UK. And like I said earlier, if it comes to the UK, it's a whole different ball game and we've seen some real horror stories. A lot of them we've managed to deal with when they do get to the UK, that said. But again, it needs maximum level of engagement and the right advice. I'll give you a very quick example. At the end of this, a colleague's gonna pop on and it's a video that we're gonna show you of two case studies. Stanley, one of my colleagues, is gonna talk you through two cases. But in this instance, uh, a lady, bless her, she passed away um, and had a home that was in negative equity to the tune of about 130,000 sterling uh, and her family didn't know they had the property. She had the property. So when it came to doing the will, they stumbled across some correspondence from uh, the bank's 
solicitors that were UK based and it got very ugly in every sense. It wasn't nice, obviously a terrible loss to the family, but then to hear the bad news and almost like the lie she'd lived with, it, with that property it made it very difficult for the family to start with. Long story short, we were appointed and absolutely attacked the case in every sense. Our job is to find out arguments to help us, when we're, especially when we're in the UK, because we're going to find a way just to slow it down, especially if they got the judgment. The other side we're finding, which is more prevalent in terms of chasing in the UK, is the appointment of debt collection agencies. And again, usually you wide, uh, worldwide guys, right? And not always the greatest of what they do, but it's still not nice to get a letter on a Saturday morning demanding that you pay them the full amount of the mortgage that you took out. Uh, and the, a couple of them are sneaking through uh, onto people's credit ratings. So there's a bank there, particularly, say, in Spain, UCI, part of Santander, we still question that they should be doing this, but they are doing it and other things are popping up on credit ratings. So again, it's that, can they chase you in the UK? Yes, they definitely can. If your loan is sold, the, the approach has got to be to attack the, situ the situation and issue. Don't panic. It can be very scary when you start getting letters of demand saying pay in full and all this sort of stuff. It's not the end of the world, but don't panic. I would say this anyway, and even if you don't ever use us, right? it's very important you get the best legal advice you can, not some solicitor that may have helped you with a will or a, uh, dealt with a person of a house in England that's got no experience there. It's very important you get the very right advice, okay? And you mustn't deal with this alone because you'll mess it up. The banks, that's not a reflection on you as clients. What I'm saying is the, the banks, uh, the hedge funds, uh, their advice, etc are very good and adept at hooking clients in. And there's been a couple of instances where our clients have, in the, in the uh, hope of getting a deal, have told them everything about their asset uh, worth and value and wealth, and it's come back to bite them, and we've had to unravel that. So again, get that advice. Communication is key. Speak to the lender, right? If you're struggling to, in terms of language or whatever, you, you, you've got emails, keep your trail in, make sure everything there. They will actually, they won't, they're not thank you directly, but they will appreciate your cooperation. And repeating myself again, this won't go away. And I think some of our audience might be of my sort of age with a bit of grey thatch on there. This is, a lot of these problems have been ongoing anyway, right? And you cannot pass to the next generation, heaven forbid. Like that poor lady passing away and leaving a property there. So if you are of advanced years, I'm trying to be very polite here, take the problem on, deal with it now, don't let it fester. And another example of a client, he had a, an awful property down in uh, near Estepona, again, using Estepona, and he lived the whole thing himself and didn't know what was going to happen and f genuinely felt he was going to pass away with nobody knowing until it reared its ugly head in a, in a, in a state, a death estate. So again, not trying to labour, we're all time marches on, but it's one of those things. And it's generally an approach we take in debt anyway. So my name is Terry Bell. Hopefully that's some of use. It's a little bit round the subject. It's coming down the track. We've got our list here. If anybody wants the list of uh, hedge funds and vulture funds that we deal with, it doesn't matter what country you're in, they come up. You get the Cerberuses, the Pepper, Apollo Global, Lone Star, uh, Elliot, Bridge, Bridgepoint, for goodness sake, uh, Oak Tree. They're all names that go around. They're worldwide organisations. And it shows the, their ability and the tentacles they have to go into any market. And they've got the model that works. That's why we know what we do. Cyprus, flip side, is like the Wild West. Anyone could uh, purchase a loan out there. We're dealing with one at the minute, a company called CAC Coral. And it's a pop-up company in Dublin, of all places, that has bought uh, an Alpha Bank uh, loan book. And we're... We're hopeful of that one quite early on in terms of what we're doing there. But it's, again, those are the sort of organisations that are going on there. It's not your fault if it's sold. Nicest way, get over it, deal with the problem wherever it lands. That's me. So uh, I think they're going to put on a couple of case studies there that Stanley's going to explain what went on. And thank you for your time. Good luck. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Cheers. I'm Stanley. I'm a senior consultant at EU Property Solutions. And today I'm going to talk to you about two cases where we managed to help people fight off vulture funds. A retired couple with a property in Spain received poor advice from a solicitor in Spain. They thought that they could just walk away 
Unfortunately, the paperwork wasn't completed properly. And five years later, they received a demand for 150,000 euros. Our clients are retired with significant assets in the UK and they didn't know where to turn. And unfortunately, like so many others, they buried their head in the sand. Their loan was then sold on to a vulture fund. And the first they knew about it is whenever they received a letter and an email with the demand for payment. After protracted negotiations, we managed to get the 150,000 euro debt settled for 26,000 euros with a saving of 124,000 euros, removing the millstone from around their necks and allowing them to move on with their lives. A group of four gentlemen purchased a property in Hacienda del Alamo in Mercia in Spain as an investment. After falling into financial difficulties, they stopped making payments on the mortgage, thinking that it would go away. Like so many other property owners, this resulted in the debt being sold on to a vulture fund who began to pursue them aggressively. By the time they appointed EU Property Solutions, they were six years in arrears. They were 200,000 euros in negative equity and had IBI taxes and community fees of approximately 20,000 euros. They told us that they would never have been able to settle this. After lengthy negotiations, we managed to secure the sale of the property at a discounted rate. We settled the 220,000 euro debt for 15,500 euros. The clients told us that they had lost all hope of settling this debt and were delighted with the amazing settlement that we got them. If you or anyone you know have foreign property problems, ask them to contact EU Property Solutions. Thank you for watching this webinar.